Right, video time, Andrew. Yeah, boy. We're going technical. Not too technical, Jay. Come on, we'll you're go, explaining it to me. We're going clever, aren't we? Quite a, to be fair, yeah, I Quite like a it. niche one, hasn't it? And it's very much been evident in the type of fishing that we've been doing. Yes, and how the weather's been. Yes, very much. What well, if, if yeah, we better introduce it before we start babbling in it? And what we want to talk about is dealing with tow. I mean, the movements, not. No, not dealing with it. I just said to you before, it's not dealing with it. It's understanding tow, How isn't it? How unprofessional, Jamie. Oh, yeah, no, it's, do, it's understanding it? what's going on, what's happening with your feed when you're putting it in, uh, right kinds of rigs. Yeah. Over depth. All the little things, in it? Shutting, everything. Yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. But firstly, we've got to talk about it, about what it actually is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that tow happens whenever there's wind, pretty much, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's the movement of water beneath the surface. Rich is going to pull some faces at us with this explanation now, isn't it? It's but it is. It's already. It's as if most lakes that you've got, depending on the type of bank that the lake is, when the wind hits a bank, it can't, it has to continue. The movement has to continue. Is it perpetual motion? <laughs> that's throwing a big one in there, isn't it? But that's probably definitely wrong. But it's the movement. Purple. The water moves. And so today the wind's blowing that way. So it's hitting that bank and it has to bounce back on itself. So what it often does is turn over on itself and you find that the water at the bottom of the lake is very, very often moving <laughs> the opposite to the water at the top of the lake. Are we having that? I like that, mate. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, in yeah, I like that. many, many situations. And in these man-made commercials, in fact, anyway, it happens all yeah. the time, doesn't it? And yeah, definitely. The last few months, January, February, March, it's windy time, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, lots of wind. I mean, I, I think you can get a good undertow and a bad undertow as well, can't you? A good undertow for me is when the wind's going one way and your float's going the opposite but, but way. That's perfect I situation, that. isn't it? Oh, mate, it's amazing. Perfect, perfect Whereas situation. Whereas what we've got today, it's not. And I thought it would be here, but it's not, is it? It's not too bad, but that, that's irrelevant. The, the, the one undertow I, I hate is when the wind's in your face and it's bouncing away from you. No, in yeah. fact, the opposite. Oh, when you, the opposite yeah. one I hate is when the wind's on your back and it's bouncing towards you. I hate it when my rig comes towards me. It's, just, it's unnatural yes. and nasty, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But it happens and you still have to learn to deal with it. So the first thing we want to talk about, yeah, is the way it moves. Yeah isn't it? It's most of the time it is the opposite way to the wind. And you have to understand that that's happening to your bait on the bottom. So while in many situations your rig could be going with the wind, it's very, very, very rare that your bait is doing the same thing. Mm. Yeah. If, if your rig's going with the wind, then I'd say that your bait's either staying still or backing up the other way and you don't know about it. hundred percent. Because yeah, Cooper's yeah. was massive for it. The other day we noticed, we went to Cooper's in a hurricane which Cooper's Lake's the one we're practicing that for this silverfish match. It was a hurricane Saturday, we nearly died. Most of my pole didn't make it home, to be fair. I was going to say, yeah, you had a cheek come down, didn't you? It was very light. Go on, mate. <laughs> but you noticed it there that when it was ridiculously windy, yeah. it's going with the wind, just because it's simply that windy. Yeah, yeah. And I've got a big R rig on, I've got a gram it's on it. It's only going to be, what you're saying, the top like foot or whatever, it's only going to be that surface. It's just the surface, through, isn't, isn't it? It flies through, but as yeah. soon as the wind dies down, your flight goes the up. other way. Yeah. And you only need that brief window of five minutes when your rope moves the other way to know that it was doing it all day. Yeah. I mean, your bait's doing that, going the opposite way to what your rig's doing. And it, it can lead to a massively poor bait presentation, mm. can't it? If your bait's going the opposite way to all the other, you ain't going to bite. No. You're catching the little stupid fish. It's you're not, not catching natural. the big sexy yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Aren't you? And if anything, most of the time, you're not fishing over your bait. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should we go into that next? Yeah, let's I, go to the bait so, next. Yeah, it's understanding where about. your bait's ending up, isn't it? You know what no, I mean? No, leave, leave that fishing. Leave that fishing. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because that's better fishing, isn't it? Yeah, go on. So, yeah, de dealing with it first, making your rig work, work right. Let's talk about that. In the, whatever the depth, be it from four foot to 14 foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to dictate your floats firstly, your depth, what you use. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, let, let's, let's go with what? Let's go with today. Let's go with six foot. Nice, nice, easy depth to explain, isn't it? So, in normal flat calm situations for catching silver stay in six foot i'd use a for fishing on the bottom over ground bait not loose feeding keeping them on the bottom i'd use 416. yeah having that yeah definitely six foot nice yeah. positive get it down 0.5 i've got on today's case for my light rig so a rig that's going to settle quickly just for catching fish on the bottom if you catch them off the bottom then toes are relevant mm. i mean because it, it's going through isn't it it's when they're on the bottom when you're catching them type of fish so it may be that a 0.5 is perfect when it's calm but what you find with a 0.5 in this case, like that, that was my 0.5 rig, I mean, I strung out to one that I've got today, is that as soon as the wind starts, because it's got very little shot down the end, because you have got a nice airy fairy one, the float wins, doesn't it? So it goes with the wind. Yeah. And that means that my float's going the wrong way, technically, because my bait's either staying still or going the other oh, way. going the opposite way. The last thing I want is a light float that may see it, it's obvious, isn't it? A heavier float is going to make it work better. 
which what we've done today is step up from a 0.5 to a 0.75 mm. and that's made it go right yeah, yeah, yeah. In that it's not flying the opposite way but it's staying still at least mm. which to me it just tells me there's not a lot of tow going on today it's, it's staying at the minute it's quite calm because the wind's only just got up hasn't it yeah, and you find that strong. that happens as well when you first get there it's often still yeah and, and the more that wind blows the more it yeah, starts yeah. backing yeah. up so on then you've got to think it? about it when you're putting your feed in it yes it's worth working out what your day's going to do i mean having your rig set up for if you know it's going to get windy in the afternoon yeah have a bigger rig set up yeah for it to fix that toe isn't it but first thing i want to go into is shotting and how that can have a big influence in i'll, I'll talk about it in a minute yeah in fixing the toe so as i say we've got the first one which is our, our new favouritest one. It's a little bit too spread out, this. This is the tapered rig that we've yeah, been using yeah, a lot, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Phenomenal weight. It's a bit too spread out because a minute ago, this rig was about 10 foot because I used it at Cooper's the other day. <laughs> so we just budged it. Because it's time, we, we need to get it sorted. But anyway, that standard topping, um, shot in. So that's a spread out shot in. Yeah. Yeah, in the bottom, it should be a barrier. But bottom third of my rig, it's going to catch me fish on the drop. But what you find is you've got no solid bulk of shot and you've got a very airy, fairy rig which means that it's not catching any toe on the bottom. Mm. So your float is bossing the rig. That makes sense? Yeah, I like that. So man. I've got a big old float on. In that case, I've got a 0.5 bulbless float on, round body float. Yeah, yeah. It's one of yours that's stolen out your box. Oh, it's, it's worth mentioning as well, float choice. You know what I mean? That's why we've gone for bodies, just because you, you can all back against them. You know Definitely. what I mean? Rather than the normal sort of Chianti style float. Yes. Where it's a little bit too sort of streamlined, aren't they? They, they tend to ride out a little bit. You can't hold them, can you? No. The nice when it's flat and sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the bigger lakes, when you've got a chop on a movement, you've got to have a movement, you? you can just cling onto a big, nice round body, can't yeah, you? Boy. That Rich will zoom in on a bit. But that was the first rig. That, that was the nice rig for seeing which way it does. Hopefully, we can demonstrate in a minute that yeah. that one goes with the wind. Yeah. Which you think it's all right, but it's not. Yeah. Swap into a different rig that could have technically been the same size, but the other rig I was using at Coopers was a 0.7. Oh, go ahead, so Jay. Like, enough, mate, mate, it's all right. It's all right. I'll give you some more shot on the that. that. So that's 0.7. Yeah. Obviously, bigger is going to help. But with this one, I've got a solid nice. bulk, or pretty much a spread bulk at the bottom there. Big out bulk of number eight. Proper. And then three big droppers. And what I believe that the, the spread bulk, or a big bulk does, it works like a sail in a toe, so yeah. that catches the toe. Mate, I love Doesn't this style. It? It's just amazing. So positive. You know exactly what's going on under the water. Yes. This is my number one go-to for like it, conditions like that. I love it, mate. When, when it's a bit breezy, ratty, gusty. Yeah. It is, you know um, it's fishing for you, you know what I mean? You, yeah. you know exactly what's happening with it, you know what's going on. It, well, it, it presents, on. right, all of a sudden you put a different rig in, like this case, yeah. and it doesn't move, does it? Or no. it, it trundles slightly, we'll do it when we, when we yeah, shoot back yeah. on it, but it goes the right way, it goes opposed to the wind, it's going upwind. Yeah. So you know it's doing the same as what your bait's doing. And that, that's the so. first thing to identify, isn't it? Is if it is moving, if it's staying still, yeah. where it's going. Don't just assume that when you put your rig in, if it goes to the wind, oh, the toe's going that way. Nine times out of ten, it ain't. No. In fact, 99 times out of 100, it's not. I think often, you know, I know I do it a lot, I know you do it a lot, is obviously when you're putting your bait in, it's finding out where the fish are from the toe, uh, so that then in the long run, you can put your bait in the same spot, but then instantly go into the spot where you've been getting your bites. Yeah. You know what Save I mean? That, that takes a bit, yeah. It's proper that When way, the fishing, that's the that, next that's element to work out, isn't it? Yeah. First yeah. thing is working out the toes happening. Yeah. Next thing is having the rigs to present your bait in different ways. I mean, cause you, you might want the light rig still set up for as soon as that wind drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The light rig's better for the yeah. fish that are on the settle. Yeah. Because you do find that all your, your rigs that combat tow, the heavy, robust, they're not good catching through water. No, they can be a bit too positive sometimes, can't you? That's the issue, isn't fish. it? So you're getting a better presentation, but a smaller window of yeah, yeah, yeah. sexiness at the end. I think when it's, obviously, when it's windier and it's like, job done, get straight down to him, it doesn't matter. But as you're saying, when it goes a little bit calmer, a bit of window opportunity, like not as many big fish in your peg yeah uh, but when you need to catch some big fish that's when that the tapered one comes into play yeah massively definitely 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 should we have a, a demonstrating good fish? one jay i'm gonna get go. right method mvi on folks oh yeah so you're gonna have a play so i'm gonna feed some bait first we fed some bait in peg aren't we go on jay i'm gonna put a little bit of bait in just to give yes. give the viewers a point you of reference lovely lot to give them a lot what we're doing we're doing putting some ground bait in some magwise in i'm putting a pinch of magwise in and yeah. a and a uh, of ground bait yeah boy just a uh of it because now that the wind's dropped a wee bit hopefully we'll be able to do things nice so first thing in my marker what, yeah, what i've got i've got a lovely flat bottom out there it's all nice i've got no lumps and bumps yeah so i'm going just past me join middle of the house the house is me marker yeah that's where i put me bait right yeah 
That's where me, me cupped in bait, me ground bait's going. So loose feed's a different thing altogether. We'll come on to that in a little bit. Yeah, boy. The ground bait's going right on that spot, right right in the middle of the house yeah. or whatever, whatever me far bank marker is. Now, the way I'm imagining it's going to work, that new bait's gone straight down. Yeah. Whatever was left before that, if there was any bait, has spread along the bottom. And definitely the maggots and things like that, haven't they? They've moved all over the place along the bottom. But what they'll have done, because it's towing this way, yeah, the wind's going to my left to right, the toe's going from right to left. Yeah. So my bait is actually going to go that way along the bottom. Yeah. So technically, there's going to be very few fish to the right-hand side of where I've just fed because there's going to be no bait that way. Isn't it? We having that? Definitely. Does that make 100%. a lot of sense? Yeah, I like that. So it's a... It, it's, uh... Hello, chicken. It's quite a... Uh... For this way of fishing, when I'm putting bait on the bottom and trying to catch them fish on the bottom, I mean, we don't want a loose feed because then it brings them up and... Yeah, yeah, just get some funny and... Yeah, for demonstrating and... tow. I might want to do that if I'm fishing. Yeah. Because that might be the fish we're catching. Yeah, but we're not doing... Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to just emphasise on where your bait's going with tow because that's the tricky bit, isn't it? In understanding where it's gone. So before I work out where I'm going to catch fish, I think the best thing to do is to show how the two rigs are. Yeah. yeah and the one will pull through and one of that. So first I'm going to go in. I'm actually, I'm not going to put bait on. I'm just going to go in without bait on. Yeah. Just to prevent me catching a fish and... Knowing you though, Jamie, you'll cool. probably catch a blooming fish on a bear. Yeah. Ooh. Firstly, I'm going to go in. I think I'm, I'm going to same place for Rich. I'm going to the light spread out rig. Yeah. That's great when it goes calm. So I'm going to lay this in. Uh, which way the float's going to move? The float's going to move to me right because it's light. So I'm going to put it in my bait downwind because that's the way the float's going to win. The, the float's going to boss the rig because there's not enough weight down the rig to keep it static. I don't think. We'll see. So once this settles now, that's, that takes a bit longer to settle just because the type of rig that it is I want to catch on the yeah. on the drop of that one. But very slowly you can see that one sneak in to the right across my peg. Yeah. I mean, not very quick. It's not too bad at the minute, but when that wind gets up, because it's the wind that's controlling this rig, Yeah. Yeah, it's probably because I'm holding right it back a little bit as well. Right, if I just it? let it go, yeah. So it just slowly turns. It's not going very fast, going quite nicely just through that rig, through yeah. the through the peg. But very quickly it'll be here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean it'll be? And that's say? well off where your feed's going to end up on all the yeah. toes under the under the water. And Definitely, because my bait's probably going that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's now that wind's got up a little bit more. See how it's flying through quite quick now. Yeah. So it's slowly going through my peg, a bit nasty, just not what you want. Yeah. The rig's not presenting nicely because it's dragging it through my peg. You know yeah. I mean, but the wrong way, my loose feed's gonna be going to the left. So it's it's the opposite, isn't it? It's yeah. just, it'll look so unnatural to the fish and it'll be the odd one out, which won't necessarily cost you getting a bite, but you'll probably catch a little stupid one. You and me yeah. get caught with this rig. Oh, mate, Steve. Definitely, we're getting nailed on this rig. In the net for five hours, done, dusty. Chasing it down peg. But it is, that's the little <laughs> roachy perch rig. <laughs> yeah? Whereas this other one now, hopefully if that wind doesn't get up too much, me slightly heavier one, but with the bulk. This one's got the big bulk, the sail sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's going to catch the toe and hopefully keep it dead still. Same thing, I'll go without without bait on, same me catching a fish. And this one I'm going to lay, lay it the other way. Because now my bulk is going to boss the rig rather than my float. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to combat the wind once it settles. Let me get that in. That wind's going to get right up now. Is that in camera rich? That's sexy. Is that right in the middle? We're hoping. So that one will stay much, much stiller. Yeah. Or even if the wind lets it, it'll back up. If it's doing that, it might not be backing up yet because it's only just got really windy. It may be staying lovely still over my bait or it'll start backing up slightly to the left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the pen. You can as see long it in one day how much still. more stable it is. You know what I mean? The other just one was like so much nicer, bristle was riding out a little bit. That's just staying put. Yes, that, that's the one in it. I don't feel like it actually is towing too much yet. No, I mean the, the wind it's takes not, but a you while. Can see how it? stable it is with how low that float is. Yes, staying. but I think that's all tight. That's staying over my bait. Yeah. So yeah, what I, like I can that. work out now is I can know that my bait's pretty much in the area that I'm putting it. Yeah, and you can work out whether I need to go past it, left, right, whatever else. Whereas if my rig was moving now slightly to the left a bit faster, yeah, then I'd know that I could put my rig in a different place. I might be yeah, just drop it in there, nice. I mean, a foot, two them. foot, three foot past my bait, yeah, and I can work out whether I need to be there on it, or whether I need to go past it and three foot to the left, yeah, to get past my bait. Do you know what I mean? It, it, 
it's all about. things that you work out in the session, that, isn't it, though? You know what I mean? It is a little bit, but I think you can, like, understand that you can know it just by what your rig's telling you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before you've caught a fish. Yeah. I've got a little knot in my hook left there. Oh, no. Jamie. Um, Do you want to borrow one of mine? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Before you've even caught a fish, yeah. by how your rig behaves, like you can even do that, like before you start fishing. Mm. I mean, it's something that I don't do enough. Definitely. So, like obviously, before all in starts, anything you plumbed before up, you're you going in. I always bait. check which way the rig's going. But what put me off a long time ago, I foul up one, it just one. completely ruined. That's, That's the way, you know what I mean? So you maybe go in with that, like an up length on or something like that. Yeah, it's it's worth having a look in it. It's yeah, nice and knowing. Definitely. But regardless of when you do it, before or after. It's understanding that rig, isn't it? And straight away you understand where your bait's going yeah. and how you can respond to it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a big key it's just thing as well. Creating your, your a quicker mindset for you in knowing where to lay your rig in to get the, a quicker response from the fish, isn't it? Yeah, in that comes peg. into it. Yes. Definitely, Alfie. Yeah, playing about it's not just always that accurate pile doesn't go straight down the stay there all the no. time. No, very not often. In this, not it, in this depth, no. Yeah, it moves not. about. And then yeah. when we bring loose feeding into it, which we'll do in a minute, when yeah. we start fishing, that creates even more because that moves even more, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ground bait's great for going down and spreading a little bit, but when the loose feed comes into it as well. We've just got that element of loose feed and it's going to go over a bigger area anyway, and then obviously the toe on it again, that's going to yeah. magnify it even more. That's what's it, so. really, really, really. But that, it's a good thing, though, Jane, that it, it does draw fish in. Obviously, nothing to Good's do with it all, that does draw the fish in. Oh, it, it, it's you know needed, I mean? isn't it? Nine times out of ten, we have to loose feed. Yeah, definitely. It, for, for the way we fish, definitely we have to loose feed. Some more than others. Yes. But even then, it's not a case of always fishing within it. No, definitely not. Isn't it? it is no. if they're intercepting it. Yeah, yeah. But when How you often we do talk about like long line pull to, you know, backing off it in. Yeah. It's like this, like the toe will be taking some bait out. So try it off it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let, that, it, let it ride through. That's what we're Let it do. ride, baby. So you I put bait on. In fact, I'm going to put two what on. What are we on? So we're on the positive rig. I've gone straight Go on ahead. that just because I know that we you like rig animal. now. Have but you left the knot on as well? I've left knot on, not staying on. I ain't wasting up length for this. Um, <laughs> got plenty you can borrow, Jay. I'm all right. I don't need 019 for this. Right. I've gone down to 017 now, thank you. So I've you. gone double Maguire. Go on, double Maguire. Come on, uh, let's go. I've gone positive rig, just because I know the other one is, you know what I mean? No good. Yeah. Chocolate teapot. Because yeah. it's flying through the wrong way. So why waste my time at the minute? And I'm not going to lose feed nothing. So because I know that this rig's moving to the right, it's moving right to the left. Yeah. I put my baiting up that way. Yeah to keep that tight line, to create curve. Go on the curve. The curve, yeah. but it does, it keeps it all tight. And I'm gonna hold it to begin with right over my bait and see what happens. Nice. Because looking at my rig without bait on. Yeah, oh, jeez, like sex but My rig without bait on. Stayed fairly still, do you know what I mean? It trundled slightly, little. Oh, yeah. nobody likes nobody. to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not snapped with half Yeah, you deserve to get snapped with that nut. It hasn't, really. it's fine, it's all good. Have you left your bait on as well? Yeah, left bait oh, on. Oh, you, so, you know what I mean? Straight in, no messing about. You still so, fish right angry. on top of my bait again. Yeah. I'm going to see what happens. And then next, I'm going to try it two foot to the left. Yep. And just see what happens there, and it'll really quickly tell you how what your bait's doing. How often as well? How often do you get a bonus fish when you come off your feed? Exactly that, innit? It? It, it's, you need to work out where your feed is so you can fish on it if wanted. Yeah. But you need to work out where the back of it is, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Because today we've had a little sneaky play, haven't we? And oh, there's, there's Jamie. loads of fish over the feed, but the bigger ones are at the back of it. The roach is going to do you, I'm not. He's not. I'm going to swing him. What the roach? Oh, it's, still, it's still a roach. It's still a roach. Beautiful roach. So that was straight over your feed. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously the, the, the little fish, you know, don't get lucky. They would all come straight into your bait. Yeah. Uh, bigger fish backing off it with the toe. And I, I love it when you do get that bit of a toe on it. Yes. And you just see your float going down nice and slow as you like creeping the water. Oh, mate, it's amazing. It looks lovely, doesn't it? But th right, this time I caught that over my bait, or where I think my bait is. Now I'm going to put it, same way again, always up toe. Now I'm going to go three foot to the left of it. Yeah. And if I get bite, I know there's bait there. Yeah. Yeah, depending on what I catch, I might catch a big fish and then I might be on the back of my bait. If I go in and catch a little fish, then I know I'm at, within my bait. You know what I mean? It's spreading, which I reckon it will be. Yeah. Oh no, maybe not. That's gone in a bit nicer. Wow, it was a bit premature then. It was a bit premature, but yeah. So now I'll go to my left, see what happens. Yeah. So the next step is I might go further back again and see if there's bonus fish at the back of yeah. it. But I could always try at the right of it, but I'd, I'd be 99% sure today 
there won't be many fish to the right of me bait because it's not going that way. I mean, all my feed's going to be moving to the left. That's the way it wants to move through the peg. So that's, that's only, I didn't put that in the right place then. I've gone slightly to it the left. But it's nicer now, isn't it? Yeah. Much, 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 much better. And you can really quickly build up a picture of where your feed is, can't you? Yeah. By where you get bites from. Definitely. And then once you do that, it leads to more efficiency because you know the right place to catch it to put your rig. Yeah. yeah. It's not just a case of bodging it straight in where you think the feed, where you're putting your bait in, because you might get no bites over that spot if it's moving a little bit faster. So instead, you're really quickly identifying the best areas to put your bait in, just so you're getting there. What you don't want is you having to wait for your float to move to the right area. Yeah, no, I don't want you, it you drifting there, three you know, foot and then getting yeah, a bite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to put it right in the right spot. That's the beauty of having a positive rig on as well, isn't it? So you get straight down, yeah, man, job done. Straight in, awesome. straight done. I mean, it's not as sexy. I don't catch as many fish on drop with it. But when it's wild, yeah. at least I can cling on. At least I'm presenting a bait nicely. Instead of endlessly laying a rig in that's not effective. Dude, that's nice. So I'm not going to, I'm not actually going to lose feed. We're going to keep it like this. But if I were to lose feed, Oof. this is lovely. If I were to lose feed, yeah. then everything would be to the right. Yeah, I've so never you put your maggots into it. Yeah, yeah, because obviously they're so light, aren't they? They, they could travel however right. far, couldn't they? They must you know, do. With they the proper toe and they, they travel miles. They go all over the show, don't they? But I'd definitely travel to me right. Yeah. I'd feed them slightly to me right. It only floats to me right, but still fish to the left. Yeah. Just so I'm, I'm where the maggots are hitting the bottom or moving to. Yeah. Because within the bait, or today it's proving within the bait, it's full of little fish, isn't it? Mm. Little diddy roach. So I can avoid that by feeding them in one place and I'm fishing where they're on the bottom and I'm just catching the nicer fish. Yeah. Which is much, much better. So I'm going to try and catch one more. It'd be nice to catch a big bonus fish to sort of wrap it up. Well, that'll just sort of happen as the, the session progresses, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course this it isn't would. We're literally the just going straight on it, aren't we? So. Yes. The fishing can't just be in and no. doing. It, it's understanding. You might have to fish it for half an hour before you understand what your bait's doing and what fish are coming into your peg and then different fish come into your peg at different times as well. Yeah. But by that point, by the time you're a couple of hours in, you understand your peg, you understand the movement of your bait on the bottom. And you're very, very efficient putting it in the right area then. So one thing I would say is can keep on putting, especially with your, your ground bait, yeah. you need to keep putting it in the same place. I'd never, once I start catching, and it may be two or three foot down my peg, yeah, I'd never start putting my bait there. No, because yeah. then you'd have to go another two or three foot, exactly wouldn't you? Exactly that. Keep going with that toe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you, I like you need that, to mate. top up in the same place all the time. Yeah. But get, or it's say weird, that, isn't it, when you're doing it, you're, like, you're not fishing near it, but you, you, know, you know it's right, because that's where the, obviously you know the fish where it's going to be. Right yeah, I'm, I'm going to contradict that, though, and say if it was stupidly towing, yeah. then I may even go up tow a bit more on my bait when I top it up. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? If I was catching miles up my peg, just to try and draw them a bit closer. But yeah, pretty much. It's gone a bit quiet now. We've got carpy and peg. Doink. Zombie bait then. Let's see what happens. But yeah, you, you end up with a lovely peg. That's it's not just a really accurate area, is it? When you've got that toe and this type of fishing as well, four silvers or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, amazing. You end up with a, it's, it's a big peg you're fishing in, yeah. isn't it? It's not a six inch square like you're tapping pellets no. for F1s. You draw a lot of fishing, can't you, mate? Of course you are. You're fishing fish in like you say as well. two, it. three, four foot square, aren't you? Yeah. Tell you know what, that's right over my bait now. And that last two casts, I haven't, oh, it's right where I put my bait yeah. in there. And the last two casts, I haven't had one. I don't think I have. So what I'm going to do quickly, just to see. So that could be, my bait's gone in, I've fed it. Yeah. I mean, we cleared settled. a bit of it out because there's definitely some fish, but what's left could be all of it has moved to the left. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is plonk one in here. Just drop it straight in there and see what happens. Get in fast. So what's that now? Two foot to the left? Yeah. And let's see if I get a bite. Nice and quick there. Yeah, how fast was that? Yeah, boy. Yeah? And I've not put anything there, so it just no. shows, doesn't it? That bait's just moved down peg a little bit. Mad, than it? It is nuts. So you, you can often be fooled into thinking the need to top up is there. Yeah. When it's not, it's just your bait's wiggling about a bit on the bottom. It's just drifting about, so yeah. 
clatter them on that, and then when you can't find any anyway, that's when you uh, that's time to top up, isn't it? Being efficient. So yes. Well done, mate. I like that. That made sense. I believe myself when I said that. Nothing. Mate, I was I was all for you. Were you were there you know, then. Yeah, I was, I was with you all the way then. <laughs> right. So there's the last one. I'm going to prove that right on top of that bait again. Um. Sorry. Right over to the left of it again. Nowhere near me bait. That is. What are you going to give me? It's a, it's three foot in it. Two to three foot off me bait. At least. And that time I've given it a bit more pole, so I've probably gone off the back of it as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, lad. We like this. You know what you're on about, you, didn't you? But that is, that's worked out nice. Now the wind's yeah. fairly well behaved. And the better stamp and all, aren't they? And the bigger fish as well, and not the vermin, are they? The and nice, you lovely roar. don't you? The little babby ones will go straight into the feed, intercept a bit as it goes down, and then when it's settled, that's when you get them big ones coming in because nothing's disrupting them, if you like. Yeah, is it? they're all just happy, aren't they? Love that, mate. So, I'm quite happy with that. I believe that were quite a nice demonstration. Yeah of understanding tow, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. So um, is, don't be stubborn and think that, I'll put my bait there, I've got a fish over it. No. Understanding it, that's what the best thing about fishing is, understanding what's happening. Don't assume, what is it, assumption is the, I'm not allowed to say that, am I? But assumption is what Fs everything up. Makes an ass out of you and me. That one, yeah. Assume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Anyway, you're going there. So let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, never assume understand what's doing I yeah, mean, yeah the fishies tell you very easily what's going on if you look for the right things innit? with 100%. the right rigs yeah definitely we like that and i, I, I like that you, you do need different rigs to like suss it on the day as well don't you you know what i mean do. yeah um don't just be stubborn again one rig does all which i've been guilty of so many times in the past mm. you've got to have different rigs set up it's terrifying the difference it makes isn't it yeah 100%. terrifying so yeah hopefully you learned a little bit from that one and you'll be able to fix it a little bit next time you go out and it's blowing a hooli but really the answer is Throw a ledge bomb or go pub. Throw a ledge bomb, stick kite in and then go pub. Yeah. Mm.